Need to improve your club on Ultimate Team? Check out IGDM for safe and reliable coins with the link in the description. Get an extra 5% discount with code NA. What's up y'all? With this video, I'm going to show you guys the updated post patch 4321. I've used this 4321 in my most recent weekend league and it worked out pretty well for me. Unfortunately, the reality is EA have messed up a lot with this game and I'm not going to really rant about it because I feel like I'm just going to sound like a broken record. But this was by far the most frustrating weekend league that I've had to play, especially with how this 4321 has been basically the formation in itself has been really it's been really affected by the most recent patch. However, I was still able to do some tweaks and things like that to get 20 and 0. However, even with these um, new tactics, I will say that the 4321, I don't think it's the most meta formation out there. Prior to the um, patch, I would have said that this formation is by far the best formation in the game. I don't really think so. I don't think that's the case anymore. So this video is more so for those that would love to keep playing with the 4321. However, if you find that even with these new uh, custom tactics that the 4321 is still not working out for you, or if you're still not comfortable, then I highly recommend you check out my upcoming other tactics that I have coming up. You know, I have a uh, 4222 coming soon that I found to be honestly better than this 4321 that I've made. This 4321 is still going to be absolutely viable and it's still going to play well if you're used to the 4321. However, I just think it's not going to keep its reputation for the best formation in the game for much more longer. But without much more needing to be said, we're going to go straight into my custom tactics, which you can see right here is my team. Defensive style balanced. 41 width, 69 depth. I'm starting to realize that 69 is probably my favorite depth with any formation in mind. Primarily because we want the highest line possible since that's the meta. Especially in attack because it keeps your players pushed up and having a high line. This also simultaneously pushes your attack up and also just forces a lot of pressure. And at the same time we don't want to use 70. Or sorry, 71. Because that's when basically EA decides to try to nerf the um, benefits of your high line by... Basically scripting your center backs to act dumb and leave unnecessary openings in the back of the line or anything weird, you know. And then we choose 41, which honestly doesn't really matter that much. You can go between anything between like 38 to 45, honestly. The reason why it doesn't say the reason why I say it doesn't matter as much anymore is because cutbacks are no longer the meta. So defending, you know, your wider positions isn't really as essential anymore. Quite frankly, defending in this game is just absolutely ruined in my opinion, especially with this most recent um, patch. It's really just a matter of letting your AI do the, all the work for you, which for me, it's frustrating to even work on these custom texts with that in mind because the, the, like these defending styles, like there's not really much more I can do besides the depth. Like the rest, when it comes to in-game, is just relying on AI. So there's not much more sophistication that I can really speak about when it comes to these instructions. And then our build-up play is going to be balanced chance creation, direct passing. When it comes to the 4-3-2-1, balance and direct passing is just ultimately the best combo in the game. I have experimented with forward runs previously and it is useful, it's not a bad instruction. And I'd also, even if you felt like trying it, I would also recommend you give this a shot if you're in a, like you're losing for example and you wanted to basically force more players up and force more aggressive runs, you can use forward runs. But I feel like for a more real, well-rounded game, direct passing is just going to be better, especially with this formation because it's really going to maximize the amount of diagonal and like uncommon unique runs that are really hard to really notice for the defender. And this is basically just what makes you feel like your team has a lot more attacking AI. And then we have 62 width, and this is mostly because having basically, this formation basically has three strikers. I know it only has one technically. However, you have three players at the edge of the box in these scenarios. So 62 width is going to be very essential to maximize the amount of actual width that you have to offer in the attack. Especially since the defensive meta, especially when other players are just sitting back allowing you to enter, you know, their half. I found that 62 is perfect to breaking down teams that were um basically just overloading the midfield with players, especially when they start defending with their wingers and their strikers and things like that, which gets really annoying because it basically gives them an extra defender. Utilizing the width is really important. It's also important to keep in mind that even though the width is kind of high, it's not going to make this formation like a formation that you're just going to rely on building up through the width. I feel like it's a really big um, misconception when it comes to changing your width, especially on this formation. What it also does simultaneously is that it allows for more wider and more diagonal runs, especially from your strikers, which in turn does increase the attack and AI in a sense. However, with, this, with these things being said, if you're not comfortable with 62 or you're not comfortable with um, what it looks like in game, you can try something like 45. However, me personally, I was trying 45 at first and I believe the uh, po or pre patch was 45 or more or less. And honestly, I preferred 62 with the uh, post patch. And then players in the box is six. There's not really much objective to changing this right now. 
the purpose with the setting is, remains the same. The objective of having six players in the box isn't to literally have six players in your box. However, it gives you more attacking options at the edge of the box or um, just in case you have an extra player attack into the box with your uh, left stick, let's say, you know, maybe your left back en enters the attack, enters the box. It's, they now stay in the box for the remainder of the attack until you're done and then they'll track back then. And especially when players have like eight, nine, ten players in the box almost, I found that this is pretty helpful. Corners three, free kicks one. I don't really have a corner set up, honestly. So obviously these are gonna be personal preference. But yeah, corners three and free kicks one. And then before I go ahead and show you guys the instructions, I do have a Discord server that pertains to FIFA discussion when it comes to squad building, uh, market watch, tactics discussion, really anything related to FIFA. So if those are things that you're looking for, go ahead and find the link in my description for the server. I'm also almost closing in on 15,000 subscribers. So if you guys would like to see more post-patch tactics, go ahead and subscribe. I also now have a Twitter or X or whatever I'm supposed to call this thing right here. So go ahead and follow me there. And then going straight to instructions, we're going to have our striker right here. I'm always going to start with striker, which is going to be on stay central, get in behind, stay forward. This guy's purpose is not going to change and is always going to remain like this for basically any single formation I make. Their objective is just to be in that box, do their thing. While also it's going to be really important that in build up, they're just constantly giving an issue to the other player center backs by just forcing runs whenever they can. No matter what, through balls to strikers is always going to be a huge meta when it comes to FIFA. Primarily because it's always so easy, especially when you have pacey players up front. So stay central, game behind, stay forward. It's basically just going to be free goals very often. Especially when you have a system that's built to um, basically offer players around the striker that is able to send balls to that striker. Stay central, game behind, stay forward is always going to be really useful for this player right here. And then pay close attention from here because since this formation is asymmetrical, it might get a little confusing. So we're going to go to our left wing right here, which is going to be on balance with getting behind, come back on defense. And then our right winger, which is going to be on stay central, mix attack, basic defensive support. Now, if you're figuring, trying to figure out which one goes on which, we're going to have to, for the sake of it making sense, I'm basically going to make it. I'm going to speak about it in this orientation however if you find that you prefer um to be for players to be on the other side or vice versa you can go ahead and mirror the formation and basically just flip it if that's what you want to do however i'm just going to speak about it from my pov basically but the objective of this right winger or right striker i know it's called the right forward i'm just i'm too lazy to say that word but the objective of this right here is to actually act as a striker however it's going to act more as like a Basically almost like a number 10 that drops a little bit more short for the ball, receives the ball to their feet. And then they can turn around and basically attack the box. This is like one of my favorite positions on this uh, formation, especially with these instructions. Because there's basically no other formation that can really replicate this. One, that's basically, mostly because there's no other formation that offers a left and right forward. But two, with stay central and mix attack next to striker with stay central game behind, stay forward. I find that these two players have really, really good link up. And then the right forward right here is going to be on balance with getting behind, come back on defense. I, I honestly couldn't, like I tried to think of a player in real life to really compare to how this player would act in game. And it's really hard to explain. This formation or this position right here is just really unique. But basically think of this player right here as a wide playmaker that, that can receive the ball to his feet coming short to join the midfield. And then he can play quick one twos with the center mid, the left center mid or the left back. This player right here is going to be perfect for counter attacks because he'll come short to receive the ball and be an option. And then right when he receives the ball, 9 times out of 10, the left mid and the left back are going to be open for him. So he can easily get quick passing options going and then before you know it, you'll be having a through ball going to the striker or to this player right here. But really this player is just really useful if you have someone with really, really high pace. I had Mbappe here personally. He was really, really useful, but I, on, I wanted to try something new for once, so I put Mia Ham right here. But if you have a player like Mbappe who's just super duper fast or maybe that new Coman or things like that, that player right here is going to be perfect. And then the left center mid right here is going to be on get forward, stay on the edge of the box for cross and cover wing. Now, stay on the edge of box for cross is only because I have finesse shot on this player. So if you do not have finesse shot on this player or finesse shot plus, then I would recommend you put it on balanced. Primarily because there's not going to be much benefit of him staying on the edge of the box. But if you are able to get a player finish shot, I would highly, highly recommend it. Even if it's not a midfielder, you can literally put like a winger right here or like a player of bad defending sets. But this player right here is going to have perfect opportunities to get uh, finesse shots right into the top bins. So if you have a player like Claudio Pina or really anyone that just has finesse shot plus, absolutely put this in, the, put them in this position. But if you don't and you have to make do, then you can put like any regular midfielder you can right here. Maybe like a cam oriented player and have him on balanced crossing runs. Think of this play right here as basically like an extra attacker. Think of like a think of like Kai Havertz for Arsenal, basically that type of attacker. 
And then your CDM right here is going to be on stay back while attacking cover center. This player is very self-explanatory. All he's going to do is just be a primary defender. He's going to drop in between your center backs whenever necessary. And he's also going to step up high whenever it's time for your, your high depth, you know, 69 depth to really showcase its pressing ability and to this player basically step up a really high whenever it's necessary and make a lot of aggressive pressing. But other than that, this player right here is just a casual CDM. There's not really much sophistication behind him. If possible, I would highly recommend a player that has long ball pass plus because that will really be able to get like a really easy set of distribution going. But that won't really be like absolutely necessary. That's just like an extra bonus if you can get it. And then your right center mid, he's only going to be on bounce attack cover center. This player is basically just a number eight, like a genuine box to box. You're going to want a player here that can do absolutely everything. You can attack, defend, shoot, tackle, all those type of things. You're just going to want a player that can do absolutely everything. Someone like Team Leader Saw is going to be perfect. Someone with Relentless Plus is going to be absolutely perfect for this position. But really all this player needs to do is just to go to box to box and be able to do anything that is um, expected from any player on this pitch without much failure or anything like that. And then your right back is going to be on stay back while attacking overlap. I would highly recommend that you don't really care about attacking stats when it comes to this player. This player is going to just stay back. That's why I have Capita right here because even though his attacking stats are just okay at best, he is really, really reliable as a center back. So that's why I have him out wide right here because he's basically just going to act as a third center back. That's just really, really wide. He's not going to really attack at all. So. And then your two center backs are going to be on stay back while attacking, obviously. And then your left back right here is going to be on join the attack overlap. You'll notice that the left back, the left striker, and the left mid are going to have a lot of really good link up. So when you're, when you're in game, try to find passing triangles between these three players because that's how I jumpstart most of my attacks. It's really quick when we use the left flank right here. And like I said earlier, if you want to use um, your counter-attacking side, which I'll call it the counter-attacking side, if you want to use your counter-attacking side more on the right side, then you could just completely flip this formation. It doesn't have to be this exact way. Just flip it the other way around. It'll operate the same way. Don't worry about that. So, And then your goalkeeper is going to be on comes across the sweeper keeper. Like I said earlier, I'm not 100% sure about this formation being the best in the game anymore. I use this 4-3-2-1 in conjunction with a 4-2-2-2 the previous week in league. And although the 4-3-2-1... I used it the majority of the weekend league. I found that whenever I was switching to my 4-2-2-2, which I will release in a couple of days, using that 4-2-2-2 was a bit smoother for me. I feel like the unique player movements that came with this 4-3-2-1 just, I feel like we're never going to see those again, honestly. The game's just changed too much with this most recent patch. However, this 4-3-2-1 that I've made was way better than what it was immediately after post-patch because my previous 4-3-2-1 that I had, I remember, I think it was on Friday, I went straight into weekend league with it and... It was rough for him. Like I went 20 minutes in confused. My players weren't making the runs they were usually making. Everything just felt dry. I wasn't scoring as many goals as I normally did. Fortunately, I wasn't losing games primarily because the defensive side of this formation wasn't really a huge issue. It never really was. But the changes that I made in this attacking should give you a bit more help. However, no matter what any other formation I can make or any other formation you can even see, there's just something that's undeniable about how this formation acts in the attack that I just you'll never see it um, be missing. And it's the fact that the left side of this formation is just so good with being a quick counter-attacking formation. You're able to go from the left back to the left mid to the left striker or the left forward in quick 1-2 passes, which is just going to be really unstoppable. If you're playing against a player that has a right back on join the attack, you're just going to absolutely shred them no matter what. So even though I was saying this formation isn't as good as it once was, this is still going to be one of my favorite formations in the game no matter what happens. Just because of that uh, uniqueness to it in the attack. But yeah, that's it when it comes to this formation. Hopefully this formation works out for you in your upcoming weekend league or division rivals or whatever you have planned for you. <laughs> because it works for me pretty well, but I can't I can't guarantee that this will work for everybody. Because this did work for me pretty well. And without much more needing to be said, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Also follow me on Twitter or X because I feel like I need to start using that more. <laughs> but yeah, that's all.